So what is a decision feedback equalizer or a DFE? Well, here's the equation for a channel with intersymbol interference, ISI. And for more information on this, there's a video on the channel which you can find in the link below this video. But we've got a measurement at time k, which is equal to a summation of input symbols from previous time. So we've got the for i equals zero element of this summation, we've got x of k, so that's at the same time as the measurement. But then for the other elements of the sum, we've got x of k minus 1 and k minus 2 and so on for all the different intersymbol interference components. And they're all being measured at time k because the channel is frequency selective. And that's what causes the intersymbol interference. Uh, like I say, more details of that in the other video, plus the Gaussian noise. Now, I always like to visualize any equation. So let me show you how I visualize this. I think of the input data stream X, which is a, um, a stream of symbols in this case. So these are the symbols. This is the baseband representation. So these are the symbols and they are complex numbers. Uh, it's always important to remember that. So these are constellation points. Uh, if it was QAM, for example, they would be, uh, you'd have 16 different choices for this if it was 16 QAM, for example. And they, they could be represented on a constellation diagram. Uh, and so each of these, I think of these symbols as being in these boxes, uh, and this would be time, uh, let's say time uh, zero, or let's say call this time one, and time two, and time three, and so on. Uh, and this is a data sequence or a symbol sequence of complex numbers which are being modulated and then sent as symbols. So this is the sequence X. And then I think, well, this is going to be received by the sequence Y. So let me uh, draw that sequence down here. And uh, we have norm we've sort of taken the time reference to be such that uh, we the, the time reference is that there's a zero delay. But of course, there'll always be a delay in any channel. But let's just consider zero delay for now. So this is the sequence of Y. And then I try to think, oh, I think of this equation here. Let me uh, just do the example when L equals 1. So I'm going to draw the example for L equals 1 here. Well, that means you've got the direct uh, uh, element, the direct symbol coming through at time k. So at time uh, 2, let's pick time 2 to start with. So at time 2, you're going to, y is going to be getting a component from the symbol at time 2, which will be uh, that symbol there multiplied by h naught plus a component of the symbol at the previous time, which is still carrying on in the channel because of the filtering of the channel. And this is being multiplied by H1. Okay, so that's the measurement here at Y2. So this here is Y2, and that equals uh, H0 times X2 uh, plus uh, H1 times X1 plus the noise at time 2. So this is the equation in this case when L equals 1. Okay, so what we want to do now is to think about the equalization challenge. And equalization means undoing the effect of the channel, undoing the smoothing out of the channel. And so you've got lots of choices for this, but we're going to look at the decision feedback equalizer here. And basically what this, as the name suggests, is you're going to make a decision and feed it back. So let's say, for example, uh, maybe we, um, uh, we, well, let's take one step, uh, one other example here, and let's look at Y1. Okay, and let's look at the example where there's a training period before the equalization starts. So this is a training period here. And, and I'll put up here, uh, I'll just write train. So these are known data symbols that the receiver knows about. Okay, so the receiver is expecting to get this training first before it gets real data being sent to it, uh, which it doesn't know and it has to try to work out. But in the training sequence, it does know this data. So that symbol there is known to the receiver. And this symbol there is uh, x naught. Okay, let's, let's use it as x naught with that timing offset of this being one. So that's time time zero here. All time is relevant, so uh, relative. So this is minus one and minus two and so on. It's just rel relative to where you pick the zero to be. But this 
is important, what we're saying here is before time one, so from time zero and before, you are sending known symbols that you're going to use to train with, and then after that you're sending symbols. Now one thing that you're going to use the training for, of course, is to estimate the values of H. So to estimate H0 and H1, you send training. So this is always here in, uh, in, in communication systems where you don't know the channel, such as wireless communications. So let's, let's look at Y1, for example, here. So Y1 equals, well, it's just this, it's H0 times X1 plus H1 times X of 0 uh, plus N of 1. So this is the first measurement you're going to take from the real data. And so if we look at our diagrams here, there's the component here from X1, but there's also the carryover component from the previous symbol, X0. Now in this case we know X0, we know what X0 is because it's part of the training data. So for the very first measurement we know what the intersymbol interference is. We know this complete thing. If we've used the training to measure and estimate H0 and H1, we know them and we also know X0 because it's part of the training symbols. And so what we can do is we can subtract H1 times X0 from the measurement. So we take our measurement, y1, we subtract h1 times x0 because we know what x0 is as part of our training. Uh, and then this gives us something that we could then divide by h0. Well, well let me just write down what that is. That then equals, of course, h0 x1 plus n1. So we've turned our intersymbol interference channel into a channel now where we know everything on the left hand side and the only things on the right hand side that we don't know are the noise of course which is always the case is Gaussian noise and x1 which is the data symbol that was being sent to us which is what we've got to try to estimate. So we've turned our intersymbol interference channel into a frequency flat channel where there's only one component from uh, the data. There's nothing smoothed over from previous time slots because we've removed that, we've extracted it. So one thing that we could do to estimate x1 is we could, we could say that an estimate for x1 equals uh, the y1 minus h1 x0. Something we could do is divide the uh, both sides of this by h0 and then we could uh, we would have just x1 here plus the noise with the normalized from the channel and so we could take that value here and we could then uh, pick the nearest constellation point so pick nearest um, uh, constellation point okay and so this would be a way of getting an estimate for the first data symbol that was sent and now I think you can see, hopefully you can see now, with an estimate of this, you could repeat this process for Y2. So you could take Y2 and you could subtract off H1 times the estimate of X1 that you've just found. And then you would be left with H0 times X2 plus the noise. And again, you would have generated for yourself a, uh, a flat fading channel from the ISI by removing the ISI. So you would be doing, so again to the name here, you would be making a decision, which is this pick the nearest constellation point, so that's the decision, and then you'll be feeding it back by putting it into the next measurement and adjusting the next measurement by that decision. So we'd take Y2 minus H1 X1 hat, which is the estimate that you've estimated, uh, and then you could, uh, uh, divide that again by um, 1 on H0 uh, and then you could pick again, pick the nearest uh, constellation point and this would give you an estimate for X at time 2. Okay, and you could continue to repeat this process making decisions, feeding them back and you would be equalizing the channel. And as long as you don't make a mistake then it will be a perfect thing to do and you will be you'll be always making the correct correction the right correction here to the measurement to remove the intersymbol interference so that's what a decision feedback equalizer is now if you don't make the right decision then you'll get something called error propagation 
because obviously if we got x1 wrong here, we would be removing, we'd be removing or we'd be adding it instead of removing it if it was binary. Um, and then we would be making the wrong choice when we pick the nearest constellation point. And that would continue to propagate on, of course, because we're continuing to, to use the current estimate to uh, adjust the next measurement. Okay, so that's called error propagation. So normally you use decision feedback equalizers in situations of high signal to noise ratio. So if you have a good strong signal, high signal to noise ratio, then you can be very confident of making the right decisions. Then you can be confident of feeding them back and continuing to make the right decisions. And one good aspect of this, particularly attractive of the decision feedback equalizer, is how simple it is to implement. So it has low computational complexity for implementation. So if you've found this video helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the web page in the link below for a full categorized list of videos. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.